this is MyCheck95, and I just finished my top 10 lists of the good, the bad, and the meh of the re-upload series. But it is now time to move on to what I call the revamped series. These movies is in a section of my YouTube channel's life under the name MyCheck Productions. And when I started to upload more films, but it's also right before the, the time when I started taking the channel very seriously and tried to turn this into an actual line of work. The only thing different about this list is that there are, are a short number of movies on this list, so there isn't really going to be a good, a bad, and a meh top 10 list. This is just going to be from the worst to the best of these films. There are only four films on this list that I was either absolutely disappointed or thought was absolute fucking garbage. And then there's a section of movies where I thought were pretty good but could have been better or were kind of meh. And then there's a section where these films were fucking great and you need to see them. Starting at the very bottom with these four films going from worst to best. And there are 18 movies on this list so keep track. But before I get into this long list of 18 films, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Join the madness. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. There's a link down below, guys, for the Discord channel if you want to hang out with us, talk to us, share your thoughts, catch the links quicker that way. Maybe sometime I can start a chat with you guys when it comes to movie discussions and everything. That'd be kind of cool. Keep an eye on that. Just click on that little box down there on the show more. Click on the link. There you go. You are then following the Discord of my Check Productions. Number 18, the very worst film that I had done in the revamp series of these movies was probably the biggest letdown on a film that I've ever seen. I absolutely loved the prequel to this film, The Predecessor, but when they made the sequel, they did exactly what I did not want them to do in the first one, and that is Brahms The Boy 2. It has been said that these two films have a divided fan base. The ones who love the first one hate the second one, and the ones who hate the first one love the second one. Okay, so first things first. I saw this film in theaters literally the Friday after premiere night. There were only like six people in the theater, including me and my friend. That's the first sign that I always see for a new movie that is not doing good. Then the movie started. And then the movie ended. And I fucking hated it. Number 17 goes to Nicolas Cage's 8mm film. This film was actually pretty interesting when it came to the first half because it was a crime detective thriller kind of horror film. And then it turned into a typical Nicolas Cage movie where he's going batshit insane. I hate it when films have a good first half and the second half is just fucking horrid. Number 16 should be obvious, goes to Batman and Robin. It's ranked a little bit higher than the last two films I listed because I've recently have given this film a new perspective, a new light. To view it as what it's supposed to be, it fucking sucks. It's, it's a horrible superhero film. It's probably one of the worst superhero films of all time. But at least I now know that I now have a way to sit down and watch this movie and not want to claw my eyeballs out because I'm looking at it in a different light. Number 15 is a film that I've seen twice. Took a couple years away from it and then saw it a third time and was let down. See No Evil 2. The sequel that was probably 10 years too late. The sequel that is probably 10 years past the time period that they're trying to shoot for. This film should have released literally the year after the first one did because this film takes place right after the events of the first one and just the fact that it took so long to make the second one and the fact that it feels more like an early 90s film in the 2010s hurts it a lot more. The kills are so downgraded in this film. They're so downgraded compared to the first one. I just wish that they could have done more. Number 14 goes to Friday the 13th Part 3 for one reason only. And it's nothing really special, except for the fact that this is the film that Jason gets his iconic hockey mask. 
That's the only thing this film is known for. Number 13 goes to Friday the 13th Part 2. I enjoy Part 2 a little bit more than Part 3 because it's a film where I can actually sit down and kind of watch and enjoy a little bit more. It's kind of a copy and paste of the first one except it's Pamela Voorhees' son, Jason Voorhees, doing it and he's wearing a sack on his head. But it's a little bit more entertaining than the third one because the third one is basically a, an exact replica of the second one. It brings Jason to the fold. Number 12 goes to Batman Forever. Another Joel Schumacher film that is on this list. I have pretty much reviewed three of Joel Schumacher's films in my Mike Check production past. Batman Forever is easily so much bearable to watch than Batman and Robin. The last like maybe 20 minutes is a little cringy. But here's the thing, when you have Tommy Lee Jones, Val Kilmer, and Jim Carrey all in one movie, sign me up. Number 11 goes to 2020's The Grudge. I liked this film a lot. I didn't say I loved it, I liked it. The thing about this film is that to kind of understand what's going on, you have to watch the original trilogy that took place over 10 years ago the American trilogy that was made. If you're going into this film without any knowledge of the first three, you're gonna have no idea what the fuck's going on. At the same time, if you do go into this film with this kind of knowledge in it and wanting to see some new scares, there's a couple new scares. There's also a couple of typical bad horror cliche scares in this movie. But I still liked it because they at least attempted tie it all together, which they pretty much did for the most part. I just wish it was a little bit higher because this film could have had a little bit more oomph in it. Number 10 goes to the original Friday the 13th. The film that started it all. I like it. The films on this list are a lot better, but I like it. Number 9 goes to Never Hike in the Snow. This is one of those very few films that, uh, that was made by a YouTuber that I decided to review for the channel for Horror Fest a couple years back. The cons of this film is not what the producers and the directors and the actors did in the film, it's what happened during the production of this film, now turned to short series, because there's gonna be a couple more to tie these together, because it's part of a trilogy short series. Never Hike in the Snow was affected by COVID, and COVID halted the production of this film for at least a year. And I feel like that kind of hurt the film a little bit because I think that they were trying to go for a full feature length film like they did with Never Hike Alone, but they had to shorten it and turn it into a trilogy because of how bad COVID was going at the time. I get it, health comes first, but I just wish that this film had a little bit more. And I felt like it ended so suddenly that I just was like, is there more? Number eight goes to the original See No Evil. This film gets a lot more hate than it should. See No Evil, the first one, is vastly so much better than the second one. It's got some weird shit in it. It's got some bad CGI. It's got the seven foot tall Glenn Jacobs in it. It has Kane. Same with the second one. So much better. Interesting. Love the story. A little weird sometimes, but it's so much better than the first one. But I know that there's a lot of people out there that don't really like this movie. And I could see why they don't like this movie. But I just kind of have a soft spot for it. Now, from number seven to number one, these are films that I say that you guys should absolutely watch. Number seven goes to Black Panther. I did a double feature review with this film and Captain America Civil War right after I found out uh, Chadwick Boseman's passing. Black Panther is a revolutionizing movie in so many reasons, in so many ways. It's such a great story. I mean, I'd be repeating everything else that everyone else has said over the years. I'm agreeing with everyone's statements. It's such a great film. Number six goes to Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Godzilla vs. Kong was definitely a lot better than this film. But this film was a whole lot better than the first Godzilla film. But it's also not as good as Kong Skull Island. But for what it has, what it is right now on this list, compared to all the other movies on this list, 
Godzilla King of the Monsters is actually a pretty decent monster flick that I would recommend for anyone to go see. It shows you a lot of other monsters besides Godzilla and those weird fucking EMP monsters. And it is just a fun summertime monster bash popcorn flick for everyone. Number five goes to Friday the 13th Part 4. The best of the original four films of this series of Friday the 13th. And as the best Jason of the four, it's just, it's so good. It's, has a great cast, has great kills. I guess you can say great story even though it's copy and paste of the other three. But it's a better copy and paste, I would say. It's more entertaining to watch. Number four goes to Evil Superman, Brightburn. This was a film that came out of left field for me because I didn't even know there was going to be an Evil Superman movie. An Evil Superman horror movie. Then I went and watched it and I'm like, holy shit, this is Man of Steel on drugs as a child who's evil and hates people. It's done by the great mind of James Gunn. Yeah, there's some weird comedy bits, I think, here and there that are very minuscule. Uh, there's a weird, uh, I don't know if it's a prosthetic or if it's like a dummy or something or CGI. But there's like one part of the movie where it, it's just, it it shows a body and it looks a little off, a little weird on camera. It, you can tell it's fake. But other than that, Brightburn is a great horror film and I feel like it'd be a great like alternate universe to go up against like Zack Snyder's like DCEU if that ever gets completed. Brightburn is a great horror film and it was a good shocker for me when I saw it do this. Number three. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, a lot of people don't like this film, but I love this film because of all of the themes, all the characteristics, all of the topics that are actually put into this film, and it actually makes sense for this character, The Man of Steel. So much realism when it comes to characterizing these characters and the things that they explain into the story, and how real the situation could be if something like this were to happen and the actual last fight scene which is all CGI who cares made me actually feel like I am watching a destructive Superman film and it's done by Henry Cavill who I think is a fantastic Superman and he needs to be in more fucking DC films somebody please give this man another Superman film I need another one. I've seen this film so many times to where I can possibly like pretty much quote it scene for scene, but it's just, it, I, it gets too much hate. It creates one of the greatest villains of all time, General Zod, played by the great Michael Shannon. You actually start to believe about how right General Zod is when he's going about his plan and his reasoning why he's doing it. But he's going about it the wrong way, but that's just how he was built. That's, that's how he was raised. That's how he's wired in his brain to go about these things. But his thought process of why he's doing it makes so much sense. And now we're down to two films left on the revamp series. Number two goes to Captain America Civil War. I've seen this film four or five times. I absolutely love this film so much. I love the Captain America trilogy. This is a great cap off for the Captain America individual trilogy series. For Marvel not having all the rights to all the characters at the time, for just building off what characters they had, for them building the MCU up to this point and beyond, they told a great story of Civil War. It was pretty darn close to the events of the actual comic, except I'm pretty sure Captain America gets shot and killed in the comics, but this one was so great. The action was great, the acting was great, the fighting was great, the story was great, all of it was just fantastic. Now number one for the revamp series has to go to The Martian. I was surprised about how drawn I was to this movie as I was watching it on the theater screen and watching it again at home. The story is written so well. The scenario is absolutely horrifying, and just it's great acting. It just it grabs your attention and it pulls you in, makes you feel like you're trapped on Mars with Matt Damon, makes you feel like you're trapped there with them, stuck eating potatoes for the rest of your life. And the suspense at the end when they're trying to come back and rescue him is just done so good, it's on par with everything that they nailed on this movie. This is the film on this list that I would say, yes, 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 
please go watch it. You need this in your life. And that, my friends, is the top 18 list of the revamp series. The next time you shall see me, I'll be going through the good, the bad, and the meh of last year's movies that I reviewed over the over the time. But this is my check 95. Signing out. Don't get lost at Mars. We'll be stuck eating potatoes.